No, I definitely did not start the recording late for this match between Poohog and the Allen. This is the final round, meaning each competitor has one match to play, one match consisting of two games. And then uh, all the points are tallied up, and whoever has the most points wins. Um, currently in the lead is Fwibib. And in second place, I believe, is No Hat Coder. So Puhag and the Allen, I'm not exactly positive where they stand in the rankings. But I can look that up while we watch this. Okay, so Puhag and the Allen are both at six points, so they're they're pretty far out of the lead. It looks like Puhag is doing a great job here of setting up this vertical threat, and the Allen is trying to build around him. So this is a this is not tack threat yet, but it's very close to one. It's basically one move away from attack threat for both black and white at this point. And so this is attack threat from white. And black missed it. White takes game one. Quick one. That was quick. That was very quick. I think that was uh, in under two minutes. So I imagine they will be playing a game two here shortly. Puha going for a decisive victory on that one. Let's let's look through the moves again. Started out okay, and then Black was going for this edge crawl, which is great in five by five tack, but in six by six tack, not the greatest of strategies because it can be cut off very easily, and you're more separated from center board control, and so White was able to place here. And then this capture move wasn't super great. Um, he probably should have placed. And so that capture allowed the capstone to come down and get ready. Okay, looks like we're in for game two. All right, wow, they're just going into it. They're quick. All right, so the Allen is white this time. Puhag is playing black. We see a sort of, uh, this this move right here is an interesting start for the six by six matches. We don't see that too often. Um, Black playing very defensively here. He's covering off all the angles for the stairway sort of maneuver. And that's great for giving yourself lots of options to cut off this threat. But it does spread out your pieces and doesn't really give you an option to make your own threats. And so this is the opportunity here for Puhog to make his own threats because whatever the Allen does, he's going to have to capture in order to make his threats. We're likely going to see a recapture here, probably from A4. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see it. I wouldn't have been surprised to see a capstone there. That would have been a solid move because it would have an attack threat and it would have basically guaranteed a capture of this stack after it was stopped. So we see white giving attack threat again here. Black can cover over here, or cover down. Either way, with this piece, it's probably the move you want to make. He's going to use the whole stack, which was interesting. Interesting play there. Okay, it looks like that was a misclick, and, uh, and the Allen was nice enough to give him the undo. Very, very nice of him. Okay, so he throws the whole stack over. Interesting play. Not sure what the point of that was. Okay, so we see a wall come out from the Allen. I'm not sure why he didn't just place a capstone there. Good spot for a capstone. Uh, just, yeah, and neither of them have played their capstones yet. A 
little confusing. Okay, capstone coming out from black. There is no threat that white can make at this point because these pieces, one of them would need to be captured in order to, to make a threat. And once that is captured, another place will probably just fill in. So a lot of capturing going on this game, not as much placing as you would expect. Okay, capstone coming out from white. Now, I don't see a situation in which this capstone does not capture this stack here at C3. And that will create um, opportunity for attack threat. And that is attack threat from black, which white will most likely immediately counter by capturing C3. No, they do not. Okay, so they do counter the attack threat just in a different way. Interesting. Surprised that capstone didn't move. White could move this over maybe. Would sort of isolate the white capstone a little bit. Take it out of the game. Could also maybe capture over here, but that, uh, I'm not sure. It's an interesting situation to be in. Um, really surprised White just didn't capture here. Maybe he was trying to be unpredictable. Black going for a vertical threat now. White coming down to capture, that is a tack threat. Black has a number of ways to stop this. Can capture down here, capture down here, capture up here, capture over here. All of those will stop the attack threat, at least temporarily. Black capturing down, that does stop the attack threat. White capturing down, no attack threat from white here. But white is in a dominant position. Black's capstone is now isolated, which is not where you want to be. You want to have this in the center of all the action, making the moves. He's placed because he knows he can. He doesn't uh, need to worry about that. He will have some issues here if white captures over with the capstone. Um, and leaves behind a black flat. Leaving behind a black flat means he can just capture back over with all these pieces and not have to worry about that. So it would have to require a capture up here or maybe a capture down here. Interesting, he's filling in. So he's trying to set up a tenue is what he's doing. Trying to set up tenue. Um, he won't be able to get it because again, this piece can move up and capture onto B3. Actually, yeah, he would get it if he comes over here, leaves one behind. This piece can capture up, but this one will capture over. And yeah, that would be a... Would that be a tenue move? No, no, it wouldn't be. Looks like black is trying to build this vertical threat here. And stop this, because that was attack threat before to come over uh, or to come up. Either way would have been attack threat, but looked like it was more setting up for something bigger. 
Okay, so it looks like he's placing here. He can go for a vertical threat if he'd like. He's he's got uh, he's got good positioning for that. But most likely he's going to capture over. If he captures over, that's really strong because he can make that attack threat capturing up, going over to the side. He can cover up these if his attack threat's thwarted. Uh, got a lot of options. White is white is definitely in control here. Now black can just keep trying to push for his own threat up north, but it, it probably won't work out too well for him. White is definitely in control here. All right, so we're seeing a placement at C4. This placement here at C4 is interesting. He's probably using it so he can cut this off, but maybe also going for that horizontal threat. Okay, so now we see attack threat from white capturing over, so he can capture up, he can go move to the side, he can do any one of those things. Uh, if he captures down, that's also a win for white. So what he's got to do is he's got to cut it off here or here. So there's got to be a capture on one of these two pieces. It's basically his only option. And he makes this choice. Okay. We will likely see a capture from here or there to recapture this. Or a placement even. No, instead he goes for that. What this is going to do is it's going to put Black's Capstone back in the game. Because there is no tack threat here. He cannot connect. So Black has freedom to move this piece down. And that is the move to make. I'm sure he's taking his time making sure he's not going to lose on the next turn. But yeah, moving that Capstone there is, is going to be brilliant for him. That's exactly what he needs. That'll put him back in the game. Not sure that any other move does that for him at this point. All right, so he did make the move. He doesn't have attack threat here, but he does have a good solid position. Now white can make attack threat by placing or placing here at B2 or at B4. Those would both be attack threats. Capturing over here would be attack threat. Capturing over there would be attack threat. Um, a lot of different opportunities that White has here to continue and keep his momentum. That was not one of them. Curious about his decision to move there. Now, Black can build, keep his threat alive, maybe, uh, maybe build here or here. Uh, C5, C4, both of those are valid positions. Um, gives him an opportunity to go up or go over to connect to this piece, which would then connect to maybe a horizontal road, like what he's going for. He could also start going for a vertical thread if you like to throw these pieces down. He could start building upwards. Um, interesting move there to play defensively. Um, it's a good spot for sure because he's got this this stack that he can take, but there was no real threat going this direction yet and there wouldn't be for quite a while i think he would have had the opportunity to build out his own threat before he had to worry about whites now it's white's turn to make his decision here so he can still make a threat that can't be stopped by this road this wall because this wall can capture here but He's got this formation, which is referred to by a bunch of different names like Citadel or Bastion or Castle or Fortress or whatever. 
it's just a strong position where you've got a two by two square of your own pieces. Okay, so he does place here to make his threat. Now this threat does not get cut off by moving this wall. And that's gotta be something that uh, Black understands here. So what he can do is he can capture over and that stops the threat, but also makes his own. Sure, it can get immediately recaptured here, but making your own threat is also very important. Keeps you in the game, keeps you alive. He can also just decide to cut off all of these horizontal efforts by coming down with his capstone. Also another viable move. I would want to keep that capstone's power though. It's got a lot of mobility with two friendlies underneath. He moves it across instead, goes for another tag threat. So this cuts off the threat of white and makes his own. It's very easily disrupted though. And that's gonna be an issue for black is that he's basically giving uh, opportunities for his pieces on the board, his influence on the board to be taken away. And we have to assume that white sees this threat and is going to stop it. White does see the threat and does stop it. Uh, that gave the win to white. I'm assuming that was a misclick. Or maybe he thought he had the win, but he didn't. Yeah, it was overall not. That was a, that was just a bad move. Um, it could have been a mistake. Um, misclick maybe moving those stacks around. But anyway, that is the match. Um, I believe one game to Puhog, another game to the Allen. And I know I'm pronouncing his name wrong, uh, but I don't know how else to pronounce it. And Puhog is funny. So. They split this, each person takes uh, one game, and that goes into the standings. I think they will both then be at eight points. Uh, no, no, the Allen is at zero points currently, and Puhag is at eight points. So Puhag goes to 10 points, the Allen goes to two points overall. And so that would put the Allen remaining in 14th place of the 15, uh, though we did have one person um, bow out of the turn tournament, so he's not really counted. So the Allen is basically in last place. Puhog currently in third to last place-ish. Uh, 11th. We'll just say he's 11th right now. And that's all going to change once everyone else plays their matches. This was, I believe, the first match of the third round. So be prepared for more attack. Thanks, guys. This is Simon, signing off.